Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to work with equivalent fractions and decimals. Equivalent fractions and decimals. Example number one. Write this fraction as a decimal. When I'm given a fraction and I need to write it as a decimal, you need to remember to divide, okay? When dividing a fraction to make it into a decimal, you always remember that the top number goes inside when you're dividing. The bottom number stays outside. So I always think of it as this top number gets blown over, okay? You can think of whatever you need to to remember that. I used to tell my students it's sunny and it's windy. And so this bottom number is protected from the wind. The sun comes and it blows it over here to the right. So I would end up with a 5 divided into a 3. I think a lot of times students just want to put the larger number inside but that's not always the case in fact most of the time when you're dealing with fractions you're gonna have a smaller number on the inside so what you need to do here because five cannot go into three you have to remember add decimal zero you have to also bring that decimal straight up I like to do this right in the beginning so I don't forget to do it five cannot go into three so I can add a zero here and remember our rules for long division does McDonald's sell burgers if you're not so familiar with long division you may need to check out my long division video five does not go into three so you ask yourself how many times does five go into thirty and it goes into it six times and it is thirty exactly so you subtract and you get zero. You have nothing left to bring down. You have a zero. So your answer is six tenths. So to write your fraction as a decimal, you make sure your top number goes into your division bar by blowing it over. Then you divide your denominator into that number. You will most likely need to add a decimal zero. Let's move on to example number two. Example number two, write this fraction as a decimal. So we're going to do the same thing here. If you need to remember this, no problem. Sunny and it's windy. Your 17 gets blown over. Obviously the sun and wind must always be on the left side. If you were to write your sun and your wind on the right side, you're going to blow the wrong way. And that's going to mess you up. So your 12 stays where it is, and the 17 is what got blown over to the right. How many times does 12 go into 17? In this case, we were dealing with an improper fraction, so the number that's on the inside happens to be larger, so we don't have to add a decimal zero right at the beginning. So how many times does 12 go into 17? It goes in one time, and that's 12. So I'm going to subtract, and I get 5. Now I do need to add a decimal zero so I can have something to bring down. But I must also add a decimal up above. As soon as you write a decimal down, your decimal always comes up above. Now I can bring down my zero. And I ask myself, how many times is 12 going to 50? It goes in four times, and that's 48. I subtract and I get 2. I can add another 0. Bring it down. How many times does 12 go into 20? One time. It's 12. I'm going to subtract. Get an 8. Add another 0. Then you have to ask yourself, how many times does 12 go into 80? And the answer to that is 6. And we're starting to get kind of long. 
for this particular example, the answer does not end. And this happens a lot when we're turning a fraction into a decimal. So sometimes you just have to stop and you may want to round your answer. Usually the directions will tell you write the fraction as a decimal and they either have the answers work out to nice clean answers where you only end with one or two decimal places and there's nothing left over or they want you to round to a certain position. In this case the directions didn't specify so let's just round to the first two places. This 6 would cause this 1 to round up 1 so this answer would be 1 and 42 hundredths. If you're not so good with rounding, check out my video on rounding. I have a video for rounding whole numbers as well as rounding with decimals. So the answer for example number 2 is 1 and 42 hundredths. Now let's move on to example number 3. Example number three, they want us to write this fraction as a decimal. Okay, this fraction is different. This fraction is a mixed number. Okay, let me tell you something. When you have a whole number, you can have a whole number in your fraction as well as in your decimal. So, what I can do is know, I'm going to write this out to the side. One, my decimal, and then something here. Something is going to be here. Guess where that something is going to come from? It's going to come from this one fifth. So the one gets carried straight over to our answer. We don't have to work with that. We're only going to work with the fraction part. How are we going to work with it? We're going to divide. How do I know which one goes inside? Because it's sunny and windy. The one gets blown over. Okay. So we have a five on the outside and we have a one on the inside. Can 5 go into 1? No. This is one of those examples where we have to add a decimal 0 because the number on the inside is smaller than the number on the outside. How many times does 5 go into 1? 0 times my decimal should always come up directly above. How many times does 5 go into 10? 2 times and that is 10. Now I'm going to subtract and I get 0. I have nothing to bring down so this is my answer for this portion but it must come up here. We cannot think that this is finished. We must take this and remember that we had a 1 initially. This 2 tenths is strictly only coming from the 1 fifth. You see because we only divided the 5 and the 1. We had nothing to do with the 1 here. So. This 0 is the same position as the 1, so I could just not write that again. And so simply a 2 gets put here. I hope that makes sense. Basically we have 1, and we're adding 0 and 2 tenths to it, so it becomes 1 and 2 tenths. So 1 and 2 tenths is my final answer for example number 3. Example number 4. The directions say write this decimal as a fraction in simplest form. Okay, we have something different to do. We need to take this decimal and write it as a fraction. So what we need to do is look at the very last number in our decimal and see what place it's in. The 2 is in the tenths place. The 5 is in the hundredths place. The place that the last digit, in this case the 5 is in, is crucial. That becomes the denominator. Okay? So, we are going to write down a denominator of 100. Okay? If the last digit in our number was a 2 and it was this 2 and there was nothing after, that would be the tenths place. Our denominator would be a 10. Do you see the connection? The tenth place would have a denominator of a 10. The hundredths place would have a denominator of a hundred. If we had something in the thousandths place it would have a denominator of 1000 and the ten thousands would have a ten thousand and so on. Okay. Then whatever is after your decimal point becomes your numerator. So we write a 25 up above. So we have our answer 
Okay, this is a fraction, definitely. We started as a decimal, and this is definitely a fraction. And this is an equivalent fraction, meaning this 0 and 25 hundredths is the exact same value as 25 over 100. Remember how I used the example before uh, in another video, our, our equivalent fractions video, of a dollar bill and four quarters? These two things have the same value. Um, 25 hundredths, you could think of it as being like a one dollar bill, and 25 over 100, you can think of it as being four quarters. These two things have the exact same value, but they look different, okay? The reason we are not done is because our directions say, write our answer in simplest form. Is this in the simplest form? No, okay? We need to figure out something that we can divide into both our numerator and the denominator. And the first thing that comes to my mind is five. If you remember divisibility rules, your divisibility rules say that any number that ends with a zero or a five is divisible by five. And I can see that five can go into 25 and five can go into 100 very quickly. Okay, so I'm dividing by five. So 25 divided by five is five. And 100 divided by five is 20. So can I simplify this? I can. I can simplify five by five again. So five divided by five is one. And 20 divided by five is four. Okay. One fourth is this decimal in simplest form. And guess what? These are equivalent. The title of this lesson is equivalent fractions and decimals. This is your dollar bill. And this is four quarters. It does not matter how you think of it. You could think of this as 10 dimes, 100 pennies, 20 nickels. These two numbers have the exact same value, even though they look different. So whenever you are following the steps that I just showed you, you are finding a fraction that is equivalent in value as the original decimal that you had. In this case, we ended up simplifying two times. The reason that happened is because the first time we simplified, there was another number that was larger that we could have simplified by. We divided by 5 to get to this step, to get to the 5 over 20. But we could have divided by 25 from the beginning, and that would have given us our 1 fourth. So that's a little shortcut trick you may not have known. Whenever you're simplifying numbers, you can always do it quickly by finding the largest number that goes into both. If not, you're going to be simplifying more than one time. Really what I'm referring to is the greatest common factor. So 25 is a factor of 25, but 25 is also a factor of 100, and it's the greatest factor that they have in common. Okay, let's move on to example number five. Example number five says, write this decimal as a fraction in the simplest form. Okay, we have a two-digit number. We're dealing with the hundredths place again. So that means I'm going to write what I was given over 100. I do not need to write this zero in. Whenever we're dealing with whole numbers and there is a zero out to the front or the left side, you do not need to include that number. So I can rewrite this as 4 over 100. Now they want us to write our answer in simplest form. If we find the greatest common factor between these two, we'll only have to simplify once. If we don't find the greatest common factor between the two, we may be simplifying more than one time. I know that 4 can go into 4. I also know that 4 can go into 100 evenly. So I'm going to divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 100 divided by 4 is 25. So this is our simplest form. I cannot divide this numerator or denominator by anything smaller than the 1. There's nothing else that goes into these numbers equally. So 1 25th is the simplest form of 4 over 100. Let's move on to example number 6. 
write this decimal as a fraction in simplest form. Okay, again, we have a number that has a whole number. The whole number is just going to be brought out because we are going to have a mixed number. Whenever we're dealing with whole numbers and we are converting from a fraction to a decimal or a decimal to a fraction, the whole number does not need to be a factor. Pull the whole number out in the beginning. So in this case, I'm pulling the whole number out and make, pulling it up here because I know I'm going to end up with a fraction. This decimal 8, formerly called 8 tenths, is what is going to create our fraction. So please just bring your whole number out. It'll make things a whole lot easier for you. So remember, we need to consider what place the last digit, in this case, we only have the one digit that is after the decimal place, what place is this in? It's in the tenths place. So that's going to be our denominator. And the numerator remains whatever was after the decimal. So it becomes 8 tenths. Now I need to simplify this. So I'm going to divide both my numerator and my denominator by 2 because it is the largest number that I can think of that's going to go into both. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. This is the fraction portion in its simplest form, but I cannot say that this is the answer. I have to remember to add it to my 7 because remember we're, we only dealt with the 8 tenths part to get this 4 fifths. We must add the 4 fifths back to that 7. We already brought it up here in the beginning. So I'm just going to write my 4 in. Now I'm going to write my 5 in. I'm going to circle this because 7 and 4 fifths is this decimal in a fraction in its simplest form. Thanks for watching. That's the end of this video. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.